So tonight was night two of the WWE draft on Raw. And in case you missed it on Talking Smack on Saturday, they actually announced these superstars for Raw and these superstars for SmackDown. So if you wonder where these superstars have gone, that's where they have gone. But this is things you might have missed. And before we get started, make sure you hit the like button. It really does help out the video. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Raw started off this week with the man, Becky Lynch, who basically proclaimed herself to be drafted to Raw. She was telling the truth. She was the first draft pick for Monday night. Of course, it didn't take long for Charlotte Flair to come out as Becky tried to say that she wanted to be Becky Two Belts again. And I do wonder if they could potentially do this. Could they actually have Charlotte and Becky merge the belts what if they add charlotte flair to this match at crown jewel what if it's for both championships that would be absolutely massive the usos were drafted to smackdown no real story but it did come to much relief to the usos and to one paul Heyman. just look at paul Heyman here he's praying to the guy who cut the ropes at extreme rules <laughs> We also had Lashley stay on Red Brand. He seemed very happy about staying on Raw. And of course, Sasha Banks stays on SmackDown. Damian Priest defended the US title tonight against Jeff Hardy. And it was Damian Priest who picked up the win. But the bigger news was Jeff Hardy after the match basically teased a character change. He said on SmackDown, we could see a new ego for Jeff Hardy. Now, first thoughts for a lot of people is Willow, his alter ego from TNA. We definitely could see Willow in WWE. It's something Jeff Hardy has wanted to bring to WWE for a while. But it could be a heel turn. We saw heel Jeff Hardy in TNA when he joined Immortal. Maybe we get that. Maybe we even get Brother Nero. Brother Nero would really work in WWE. We kind of saw everything from Matt Hardy's point of view, from broken Matt Hardy. Brother Nero really didn't get a story, so maybe we could get Brother Nero on SmackDown. Of course, it didn't take long for Austin Theory to debut, and Austin Theory wanted a selfie with Jeff until he attacked him and laid him out. Great way to introduce Austin Theory, or reintroduce Austin Theory. I feel like Austin Theory is one of those guys who, maybe in about three years' time, could be a main eventer in WWE. He's got everything to make it. It's just if they use it. Of course, Austin Theory did go to Twitter posting the actual pictures with Jeff Hardy, which I thought was pretty cool. RK Bro is back together. Randy was not out for long. Randy Orton did tease the legend killer tonight, which was kind of fun. You can see Matt Riddle's reaction to it. But now it's that time of the week where we say, did Riddle really say this? Hey, is that a snake in your pocket? Are you just as happy as I am? Mm. Seth Rollins was drafted to Monday nights. And of course, the Intercontinental Champion, King Nakamura and Rick Boogs stay on SmackDown. Which means you know somewhere Pat McAfee is dancing away with happiness. <laughs> Damian Priest and the US title stay on Raw. And Sheamus goes over to Friday nights as well. It also does mean that we will not get Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns anytime soon. Unless maybe Seth wins a WWE title before Survivor Series. Maybe? But you also may have heard Seth Rollins say shit on Raw this week. Well, apparently he did tweet out during the show. I guess we can say shit now. Very exciting. Hashtag shit. So... Obviously, this is WWE, again, leaning towards that edgier product. And we've seen it with NXT. Now it seems to be trickling into the main roster as well. AJ Styles and Omos, they stay on Monday Night Raw, while as Shayna Baszler is heading to SmackDown. We also had Kevin Owens drafted to Raw. And Zia Lee is being called up. She's going to SmackDown. We then got Big E in the ring. Oh, this was such a good segment. Honestly, it was as Drew McIntyre came down, soon to be called Big D. And it wasn't long till the Dirty Dogs came out. And Dolph Ziggler, what a promo. Going back through history, talking about his history with Big E and with Drew McIntyre. And do you know what? This was good. I love this. Making Dolph Ziggler relevant again. 
proves the point that no one's ever truly buried. You can always do these kind of segments where you then get a tag match that makes actual sense. I liked it. The Street Profits were drafted to Monday Night Raw. We was worried they might get split. But their reaction was a bit OTT. Was SmackDown really that bad to you guys? <laughs> well, we had the Viking Raiders then go to SmackDown. And then Finn Balor got drafted to Raw. There was exciting news that USA Network wanted Finn to replace Drew. That's massive. But then we had this commercial for Balor. And this is even bigger. Because they tease the demon again. So it doesn't look like the demon was just a one and done. It does look like Demon Balor will be used regularly, especially now, on Monday Night Raw. Ricochet got drafted to SmackDown. And we got a tease from Mustafa Ali about the SmackDown hacker. Over on Twitter with Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp down, he blamed the SmackDown hacker. Now, obviously, Mustafa Ali was just drafted to Friday Night's. Could we see a SmackDown hacker return? That would be cool. It looks like we got the next feud for Dewdrop and for Shayna Baszler, which was kind of fun. I think it would just be a match because we know Shayna's heading to SmackDown. But honestly, I like this. I like this a lot. Obviously, Dewdrop standing up for Dana Brooke, who basically got her ass handed to her. Great to see Dana Brooke back. No idea when we're going to see her next, but she was back. But I like the idea of Dewdrop versus Shayna. Dewdrop is not someone Shayna should be able to throw around with ease, and the way they presented Dewdrop tonight was actually decent. Karrion Cross stays on the red brand of Raw, but where is Scarlet? We got Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo moving to SmackDown. Alexa Bliss stays on Raw, interesting, and Cesaro is staying on SmackDown. Now, I do think that the idea of separating Alexa and Charlotte is not a bad one. Especially if you're going to return Alexa where she might eventually get revenge on Charlotte. You're going to need to wait for that. You need to build to that. You need to establish Alexa's character first. Let her be something in between the goddess and the dark lily entity which she could be. And I think that will really work. I'm interested to see how this could go in a year's time. Goldberg returned. And honestly, he looked weird. He had a ripped t-shirt. He had scratches on his face and it almost looked like his T-shirt was dirty. What is going on? I'm sure it's part of the design, but it did look dirty. Is this like the downfall of Goldberg? What is this? Why? I don't understand why Goldberg looked like this at all. I've got no idea, but it didn't take long for Lashley to come out and basically issue the challenge for no holds barred at Crown Jewel, which left Goldberg to go fall to his knees because he's happy because he wants to murder Bobby Lashley. Honestly, that's a bit extreme. <laughs> Xavier Woods is so happy about the King of the Ring. He's been all over it on social media posting this video. This is the reason that I got into wrestling in the first place. To his Twitter, and if you haven't checked it out yet, go and check it out because it's passion. Genuinely passionate from Xavier Woods on why he wants to be King of the Ring. To Corey Graves' delight, Carmella moves over to Monday Night Raw. Rich Holland got called up to SmackDown. I'm excited for that one. And then we had Gable Steveson get drafted to Mondays. OMG, he's skipping NXT altogether. And I'm all here for it. That's going to be fun. And the final pick was Sami Zayn heading over to the blue brand. Well, he was on SmackDown. Wasn't he? What am I talking about? You can tell it's late. Sami Zayn has smacked down. Did anyone else notice that Charlotte Flair got upstaged by a prop box tonight? Take a close look. She got upstaged. I have to admit, the honest shocking thing for me was the fact that Liv Morgan was not drafted. How have you not noticed the fan support for Liv over the past few months if you're WWE? That one was a bit shocking for me. I'm sure she will be drafted on Raw Talk, but... She wasn't drafted on the show, which just shocking. I think following Friday, SmackDown definitely won the draft. I think when you look at tonight as well, it's hard to say that SmackDown didn't do a better draft pool. But I do think Raw has some compelling stories to tell with the new up-and-comer, Austin Theory. It will be interesting to see how Alexa Bliss eventually returns to the WWE over on Raw. 
And with Seth Rollins of being allowed to be a bit edgy, and now that should be cool. Of course, Arcade Bro, everyone loves them. SmackDown's going to do fine with Jeff Hardy teasing a new ego. Zaya Lee is amazing in the ring. And of course, they got Pat McAfee, so SmackDown's always going to do great. Whatever is next, I just hope WWE capitalise on the momentum they've already picked up because they have been getting some good shows recently. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Like the video, share the video, and if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Peace!